All right, we can do this. Today, we're talking about aim assist, specifically in Rogue Company, and why some people think that it exists, and some people just don't think that it's much of a thing. Now, I didn't test this on console. I only tested this on PC, so a little bit of a disclaimer there. I don't know if it is different for a controller on a PS4, a Switch, or a Xbox, but I did test the Xbox, this guy right here. I tested this controller in comparison to the mouse and the keyboard. I'm not going to lift up the keyboard i tested both of these side by side and we've got all the results here just so that you guys know how this performs in comparison to this so first things first i wanted to make sure that you know what the settings are that i'm using in this video i'm going to scroll through this list here we're going to go down through the movement mouse controller and see what all the controls are i'm not going to go into any specific details about it just Pause the video, look at the settings if you want to see the settings, it's mostly default. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about is what actually triggers the aim assist. So what I'm going to show you first is mouse and keyboard, how no matter what I do, whether that's standing still, aiming in, aiming down sight, strafing left and right, or ADS while strafing left and right, there is no aim assist. Obviously, it's on mouse and keyboard. There's not going to be any kind of sway left or right on the crosshair when the bot runs by. Now for controller, what triggers the aim assist? And this is one of the reasons why a lot of people feel like there is an aim assist in this game and they will argue that it's very minimal. Standing still, you're not gonna see any aim assist. Even when standing still and aiming down sight, you also won't see any aim assist. The difference becomes when you start strafing left and right. Same thing goes for if you're aiming down sight while strafing left and right. Now you can rewatch that back or you can watch these side by side to see what that looks like in real time. This is the controller versus the mouse and keyboard for each of those four scenarios that I just mentioned. Next up, I wanted to test what the range was on aim assist. I didn't know if there was some kind of a fall off at maybe 30 or 40 meters that aim assist no longer took effect. So I decided to incrementally start increasing the distance at which I was testing aim assist. Here you will notice the difference between a target that's moving left and right, as well as how you kind of have a little bit more of a soft lock on when you're using the controller. Now at a target of a distance of around 30 to 35 meters, you'll see that I kind of orbit around the target. At a distance of 40 meters, the same thing occurs. And no matter what distance I tested this at, I still had some level of aim assist. Now, some people will say that aim assist is just your crosshair slowing down when you're on the target, but you're not changing time in the game. What's happening is that the game is recognizing that you're close enough to a target. After you've gone past that target and a little bit of a bubble, you could think of it as, that's on that target, it starts to resist your movement and it helps you stay on target for a little bit longer. So to kind of showcase what I mean here, I'm gonna show you two different scenarios. One where I'm shooting at a target with the MXR and it's staying on target very well. And the next one where when the target is no longer there, the mouse and keyboard and controller actually act the exact same. You'll see as soon as that target dies, I no longer have that soft lock with the controller. One other thing that I wanted to test was bloom and bullet patterns. The only reason I wanted to test this was because I had seen people complaining about it on Reddit and Twitter. They were saying that bloom on a controller was actually less than bloom on a mouse and key. Bullet pattern was also getting the same criticism. So I thought, you know what, let's test it ourselves. First, we have the bullet pattern on controller. Then we have the bullet pattern on the mouse and key. All I'm doing here is pressing down on the right trigger. I'm not doing any kind of compensation with the aim by pulling down on the sticks. Same goes for the mouse and keyboard. All I did was left clicked and I didn't drag the mouse up, down, left, or right. 
I thought maybe this is just because it's the MXR that I'm using, so I decided to test it with an SMG. Here are the results on controller for a primary SMG as well as a secondary SMG. From what I could tell, there wasn't really any difference in terms of bullet pattern or recoil. So that's all that I wanted to do in terms of testing for aim assist on a controller versus just the mouse and key that has no aim assist. And you can judge for yourself if you feel like that's too much aim assist or not enough aim assist. I'm not really going to be the judge of that because I do think it's a really hard thing to balance. But I did try to go test my skills after that short time in the shooting range just to see how difficult is it to manage with all the different button presses you have to do on a controller versus what you have to press on a mouse and keyboard. Now to do this test, I wanted to try to make both games as similar as possible. So I decided to jump in a strikeout. We had two different maps, one being Icarus, the other being the arena. And I'm going to do a lot of cuts here so you guys just get the action sequences. For me, I was just testing to see if aim assist made that much of a difference or not. So you'll see I die a few times and you'll see a few times where I get some pretty solid plays. But the whole time that I had played controller so far in this round, this was the first clip that it felt like I was really feeling the aim assist. I personally felt like I was snapping out of targets at a pretty quick rate, especially for this being the first round of the first game I had ever played with a controller in Rogue Company. I do also want to mention that I played on controller for 15 to 20 years, and I just switched to mouse and keyboard in the past six months. The last time that I played on a controller was back in the first week of May. It was the 5th of May uh, in 2020 that I played on a controller, and that was with Apex Legends. So prior to this video, I had never played on a controller on Rogue Company, and I haven't even used a controller in literally... It's almost six months. The gameplay you see in this video is literally remaining. the amount of time that I had spent on a controller in Rogue Company. Why do I tell you that I haven't played on the controller? It's because you're going to see that I'm missing shoulder swaps. I don't know how to roll. I, I'm i just missing control in clicks. I'm doing it wrong. So for those of you down in the comments section, and I know you're going to be down there telling me that I suck, and that's fine. And I know that I'm going to get flamed for putting up content about aim assist. It's just about the facts of, is there aim assist? Is there not? Why do people feel the way that they do if there is or isn't aim assist? And then how much is there? It doesn't really matter. And does it make sense about how much there is? Because on one side of the spectrum, you've got no aim assist and you just shut it off and you play with your thumbs. On the other side, you've got lock on mechanics like they have in GTA, where you just hit the left trigger and you're aiming at somebody. And it's extremely hard to balance that, to make it similar enough to where the input method doesn't matter, when in reality, you've got a mouse that definitely has more precision than a controller. But I want to see, is there an assist, and is it over-tuned, or is it under-tuned? Does it need to be buffed, or does it need to be nerfed? Okay. I think the biggest thing that it felt like was different on a mouse and key versus on the controller was that it felt like I was more precise with my shots because I was able to stay on target for a little bit longer. I didn't feel like I had to compensate for every shot because the aim assist kept pulling me back towards center. Again, this is expected though because controller needs a little bit of compensation whereas a mouse and keyboard, you have a lot more control over recoil and bullet patterns. I try to keep the upgrades the same between this test on the controller and the next test on the mouse and keyboard. By the end of the round, we had lost 2-3, to three, but I had my test done. I also want you guys to keep note of which players I played against in this game in the scoreboard here. This is almost the same team that I get matched up with in the next game where I'm on mouse and keyboard. This is a good thing because then it's one of the variables I don't have to worry about is the skill of our team versus the skill of their team. This time we're on mouse and keyboard on the arena playing as Zalia, using the same gun, the MXR. As I was playing on mouse and keyboard, I noticed one thing was really different between playing on the mouse and keyboard versus playing on the controller. That was that it felt more free to be able to spin around quickly and try to lock on a target a little bit quicker. It felt better knowing that I could spin around as quick as I needed to to try to lock onto a new target.
Now, I know I'm not the best mouse and keyboard player out there, so I know there are some shots here that I shouldn't have been missing. Another thing that I noticed about mouse and keyboard that's a lot easier to do than on controller is the crouch spam. Now, I personally don't think crouch spamming is even a great tactic in this game. I'm just used to doing it from time spent on Apex Legends. One other thing I noticed that was a lot easier to do on controller than a mouse and keyboard was throwing grenades. On controller, you're able to look and move in any direction while holding a grenade. On mouse and keyboard, with the way that I have things bound, I'm unable to hold a grenade and cook it without losing one direction of mobility. I currently have grenade bound to G, which means I have to take one of my fingers off of W, A, S, or D, which are bound for movement. However, with Rogue Company being a very jiggle peaky kind of game, it really isn't that big of a deal. I also felt like I was moving a lot faster on PC. I think this is a false perception though, because although I'm able to spin around a lot faster, it doesn't actually mean that I'm moving around the map faster. On your feet, soldier. Good enough. Good enough. At the end of the game, we actually ended up with a pretty similar score to the first game. So I guess what's the final verdict, right? Is aim assist too strong? Is it not strong enough? Does it exist? Does it not exist? I think it's pretty evident that it does exist in Rogue Company, but the question really is, is it too much or is it too little? My personal opinion on it is this. I played my first game ever of Rogue Company on controller in this video. I had 34 eliminations, 28 downs, and 5,600 damage. I wasn't shoulder swapping correctly, I wasn't rolling at the right times, I was accidentally crouching when I meant to do rolls, and although we lost, I was at the top of the game across the board. Now in the past, I've played games at a pretty high skill level on controller for a long time, but it felt odd to me that I could pick this game up, literally play one game, I haven't touched a controller in 5-6 to six months, and do that well. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. What are your thoughts on aim assist? Do you think it's overtuned? Do you think it's undertuned? And please try not to be toxic. I'm just trying to state the facts of what's going on in the game right now. I'm not picking sides. I'm not saying controller players are worse or better, that mouse and keyboard players are, are better. I just wanted to give you guys objective proof of what one is versus the other. And I hope you got that from this video. And if not, I... <laughs> I guess I'll read about it down in the comments section. Thank you guys again for watching this video. I appreciate all the support on the channel so far. If you did like this video, if you found some value out of it, please like and consider subscribing for content like this in the future. We've been dropping Rogue Company content every one to two days, and I would love to have you guys here and in our community over on Discord. I'll put the links in the description for the Discord down in the description as well. And if I don't see you in the Discord, I'll see you next time.